Welcome to Telesur, I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the big challenges facing this country and the region. In today's program, we analyze the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in our country. We have discussed the health aspect of the virus and the disease, but now we want to focus on how it is affecting our economy. Will the government of Ecuador put profits over health? And how will we recover economically from the lockdown? To answer that, we have economist Pedro Paez. Thank you, Pedro, for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. So first, we want to see how, what has been the impact, the economic impact of COVID-19 for Ecuador. We must um, understand the circumstances of, uh, of this pathetic episode and this contradiction between life and capital that we are living in Ecuador. Um, we have to understand it into the framework of, of three years of a very extremist agenda of neoliberal policies that had already created a, a depression among some of the most vulnerable segments of the population, especially the, the small and medium-sized uh, enterprises, capitalist and non-capitalist, in the rural area and in the urban area that had been facing um, a negative, interest, a negative a, a inflation rates for almost three years, a facing at the same time very high costs coming from these bottlenecks of oligopolic control, both for imports and from national production, and at the same time um, a final prices uh, falling time and again, all the time, creating uh, a situation of debt deflation a, a, a need, an urgent need of, of uh, indebtedness in order to end, uh, end the month with the, with the expenditures of, of the family. Uh, when the, the COVID uh, came to Ecuador and the quarantine uh, uh, restricted even more the conditions of, 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 of gaining the, 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 the livelihood of every day, uh, the situation had been uh, catastrophic. And before we analyze what um, the latest announcements by the government, we want to look back a bit because when this just happened, when we were just having this uh, lockdown in Ecuador, the government announced a several uh, list of uh, austerity measures, but they haven't been approved yet. How would that work? Would they be approved? Do we need those austerity measures? The government and the deep state uh, that includes the American embassy, uh, the, the banks, the big banks, and the um, traditional elites coming from a, a pre-capitalist uh, matrix of monopoly power, um, had uh, a, some very monolithic convergence around the most extreme agenda of neoliberalism, uh, hidden behind the um, gaining of, of Lenin Moreno as a candidate of the center left. So when the adjustment of accounts with the, with the, with the Rafael Correa started, they started to deploy this uh, agenda in every front, uh, in every little front of, of the public gestion, of the public administration. They uh, deploy their agenda with a lot of uh, audacity. Um, however, the, the ambitions, the, the the, the uh, repart of the the, the, the the distribution of the of the gains of the of the, of the bounty among these uh, coalitions uh, had been creating a endogenous obstacles to the deployment of the agenda um, with the uh, the um, attempt to the trole, the so-called trole uh, four the the omnibus law that included uh, a very very heavy reforms to a lot of, of organic laws and even violating the constitution in order to further the deregulation of the financial markets, the deregulation of the uh, uh, current and the, cap and the capital accounts in the balance of payments, and the uh, more extreme uh, 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 labor reform. Uh, the um, circumstances of the popular uh, abrasing in October created a condition of further exacerbation of the disputes within this uh, deep state, within this coalition. Uh, so they are still trying to uh, deploy, to, to implement uh, in operative terms, all the reforms, 
uh, not necessarily through the law that was already proposed as an anti-constitutional law, but uh, through minor uh, bylaws and administrative me measures in every single aspect and every single front of the economy, more specifically in terms of taxes, in terms of exoneration of taxes, subsidies to the rich people, um, social security, uh, labor reform, uh, and the regulation of the financial markets, uh, creating a kind of reservoir of resources in the national, in, in the international reserve in favor of the banks, trying to uh, exonerate them uh, out of their um, duties uh, to fed the, the, the warranty fund, the liquidity fund, and uh, all the mechanisms that had created a minimum balance in terms of avoiding moral hazard and, uh, and uh, adverse elections. So the current situation is a kind of um, uh, impasse uh, among these uh, elites uh, in, the, in the distribution of the, of the privatization of the, of the public enterprises and the most important productive assets of the state. And at the same time, uh, trying to go as far as they can in every uh, front of the uh, neoliberal agenda. And now that you've mentioned this neoliberal agenda, now the government says, the current government says that the last administration left no money for these situations, for economic situations that need uh, a balance of payment, uh, like a cushion, a cushion for uh, money that we might need in case of a pandemic, of what we're living in, in this moment. Is that the case for Ecuador? Do we not, are we out of money for uh, taking care of a pandemic in Ecuador? Well, this is a kind of uh, um, outrageous uh, claim on behalf of some of the functionaries on, of the authorities that they uh, had even mentioned the reserves of Canada or saying that Ecuador should have 80% uh, of the GDP as international reserve in cases of this uh, kind of of exogenous uh, shocks, uh, it is impossible. The, the, the best type of savings that the country can can have is precisely the construction of uh, the construction of infrastructure, as uh, it could be proved uh, proving during the the El Nino phenomenon, when uh, Colombia and Peru had very heavy losses, very heavy human losses, and very uh, onerous uh, uh, infrastructure losses, uh, material losses, and Ecuador due to the to the infrastructure that were uh, has been built during the first during the, the previous years during the, the first years of of the Correa government uh, was able to uh, surmount the situation without uh, without uh, any inconvenience. Of course, if you have the the perfect storm with the um, the earthquake, the phenomenon El Nino, the the very uh, dramatic drop of oil prices and the, the aggression, the offensive of the banks creating a credit crunch situation during the last years of the government uh, trying to obtain through the manipulation of the markets, through the manipulation of the financial sector and the liquidity of the economy, what they were unable to do it uh, through the, 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 the vote, the popular vote, you have a, a very difficult situation. Even though the government, uh, the, the, the new government, uh, received a country in playing recovery, um, the cycle was getting up, up to the point in which, again, the offensive of the banks with an exacerbation of the uh, capital flights and the same government policy, the fiscal austerity policy, Created, recreated the conditions of recession, uh, especially uh, against the, the small and medium-sized uh, entrepreneurs. So this is a, a historical inheritance. This is a structural uh, um, addiction that Ecuador has with respect to the oil revenues, both for the uh, economy as a whole, in more so uh, with the, the conditions of the dollarization, in which we don't have the cushion of, of, of the national currency, but uh, more specifically, in terms of the government revenues, the lack of, of, of taxation uh, upon the oligarchies, uh, the historical uh, political weakness to tax the oligarchies have created this dependency 
of the uh, government expenditure and the government intervention on the revenues of oil uh, between 40 and 60 percent of the oil uh, of the of the of the government revenues of the budget has been fed by the uh, oil revenues uh, during the last half century so it in, indeed is a very sharp problem the 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 dramatic drop in the prices of oil but uh, there are some alternatives in terms in terms of the of the recovery of the economy the problem is that we are in the middle of, of, of this dogmatism, this fundamentalism of markets uh, in, on behalf of the, of the whole cabinet, in special of the, of the economic cabinet, that had created conditions to nick in, uh, have everywhere, even, even with the most uh, neoliberal governments, in, 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 uh, both in the north and in the, in the, in the underdeveloped countries, you have a stimulus packages trying to confront the crisis. Here in Ecuador, they have deepened the, the, the austerity policies, uh, firing uh, public servants, reducing the salaries of the public servants in an unconstitutional measure. Well, we also saw throughout this month that the government kept announcing several economic stimulus, economic packages for the smaller businesses that will be affected by COVID-19. Do you think those announcements were some kind of, uh, sort, sort of trying to cover what they um, really wanted to do, these austerity programs? Very, very insufficient. Uh, almost 81% of the families in Ecuador do not have savings enough to uh, meet the, uh, uh, the mountains. Uh, it, they, they gain the livelihood, their livelihood is gained every day, both in terms of wage labor or in terms of a, a small uh, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, small sales in the street, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the same happens with the peasants. Uh, the poverty in the rural sector has reached the last, the last figures that were already manipulated about poverty in the rural sector uh, reached 71% of the population. So the situation is really, really extreme. Um, the, the, um, the palliatives uh, have been uh, totally insufficient. Even the bonus that were part of the traditional and very effective policies in terms of emergency um, had been uh, uh, too little too late. Um, we need to create another type of, of, uh, policy, of, 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 of a policy package that includes, for example, the new technologies of, uh, of, of information and, and coming, communication, like uh, the electronic currency, the digital currency, in order to uh, promote the, uh, a much agile circulation of money, um, much, a much more opportune capillarity in terms of the provision of liquidity to the to the rural areas, to the provinces, to the to the uh, populous uh, neighborhoods in Quito, Guayaquil, and the big cities, uh, we need to promote uh, all type of conditions in terms of the the platform of the internet, uh, heading to the internet of the things uh, like what uh, the superintendency of market market power control uh, deployed uh, since. Uh, 2015 with the super tienda ecuador is a kind of a kind of a, a software platform in open source uh, open to any kind of institutions public or private institutions that is a kind of fusion between uh, applications like uh, ebay or or uh, trivago or uber uh, but uh, put to the disposition to the uh, to uh, facilitate the, the business of the small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, you have P2C, that means producer to consumer relationships. You can manage also producer to producer relationships relationships in order to, to con build up uh, the, the fabric, the productive fabric from the community, from the territory. Um, you have possibilities to G2P, uh, relationships between the government and the producers, both at the central level and and the and the local level, and you can build up a, 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 a new type of associations and consortiums in order to create a, an alternative a, a channel or alternative networks of um, of supply to the cities that uh, thus far have been concentrated in the big supermarkets 
and in the big banks. We need to create a new type of, of, of relaunching of the economy, but with a, a very uh, sharp, inclusive uh, horizon. So, Pedro, do you think then it's necessary for the productive sector, at least a part of it, to go back to work as announced by the government just um, weeks uh, after we see a surge in the cases of COVID-19 in Ecuador? Is it wise to just go back to normal or is it just maybe uh, the productive sector is pushing the government to acquire this? It is a, a very, very uh, hard decision because, as I mentioned, we have 60% of the of the of the uh, economically active population in the informal sector, and 81% of the households depend on the gainings of every day. However, I think uh, uh, it will be irresponsible, criminally irresponsible, to uh, 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 weaken the, the sanitary measures prevent the, the contagion uh, due to the pressures of the big capital. What is, and that is what is all going on now with the decisions of the government. On the contrary, as I mentioned, there are some uh, uh, alternatives in terms of the technologies of uh, information and communication that uh, within the restrictions of mobility and contact that uh, must be uh, continued uh, in order to prevent the, the already, already disastrous the situation in terms of con in terms of contagion and, and fatalities uh, in Ecuador, uh, we could have another type of, of relaunching of the economy uh, from a popular perspective. Again, you have uh, Super Tienda Ecuador, you have uh, Dinero Electronico, the, the digital currency, uh, but not as, as a monopoly of the banks, but as a public service without uh, 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 profits. Uh, we have alternatives like uh, the credit card, the productive credit card by the public bank in order to reduce cost, 0% uh, interest rates, uh, uh, to reduce uh, uh, transaction costs uh, for the small and medium-sized producers and to create the conditions of, 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 of uh, working capital um, within the uh, framework of the seasonal requirements of production, especially food production in, in, the, in, the, in the rural area. We have alternatives in terms of micro insurance for the rural and the, on the, uh, and the urban area for the small and medium sized enterprises. We have a system of warranties and retro warranties with the support of the, of the state. We could have a, a, a public private uh, endeavor uh, with the private bank that, that had obtained a, a record uh, profits during the last uh, years. Every single year they uh, uh, overcome the previous uh, gains, the previous profits of the uh, in the in the in the midst of, of, of a recessionary country, a recessionary economy. So we could have a, a, a devolution on behalf of those banks of this uh, favor that the, the, the uh, Ecuadorian economy had, had uh, uh, given them uh, in order to relaunch the economy. And the same happened with the big telephonic uh, enterprises, the providers of internet, for example. We have uh, an important co uh, coverage of, of, uh, of mobile phones, of mo mobile phones, but uh, the cost of internet services, data especially, is uh, very high, is much higher than in uh, our neighbor, uh, uh, neighbor countries like uh, Colombia and Peru, even if they uh, had been served by the same transnationals. So we could, we could have a, a, a relaunching program, a package, a coherent and integral package of relaunching of the economy through the uh, uh, technologies of information and communication with the liberation, with the free data uh, on behalf of these companies and the and the public company uh, uh, provider of those services in, services in order to uh, 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 cover the the, the most uh, uh, vulnerable the most the most fragile segments of the economy and the population. And that was exactly my next question because can we ideally believe that a country like Ecuador can depend slowly slowly on um, these technologies since the most Thousands of people in Ecuador don't have access to internet, don't have access to a telephone, to a smartphone, to a tablet, to a computer. They can't work from home because even if they ask, even the, the government asks them to stay at home and work from there, they can't. Can we think of a, another way to, to achieve it? Because as the statistics shows, you have a lot of people that cannot do that. 
is the least dangerous uh, mechanism to do it and the most uh, easy um, uh, alternative in terms of uh, government intervention because there where you don't have the services of of, uh, of internet provision, you can go with a, a specific intervention of the government that could be could be solved in in uh, in a few days few days you, with the with the platforms of of uh, Super Tienda Ecuador and the electronic currency. Uh, it is very easy to create conditions of self organization of the people in order to uh, build up a coherent uh, uh, system of of um, provision and uh, and uh, the chains of value uh, uh, outside of the monopolic and oligopolic control of the big supermarkets, the big companies, and uh, the big banks. Um, uh, the lack of, of uh, coverage of uh, internet is, uh, is really relative because you have uh, uh, the ratio of uh, mobile phones to population is more than one. So even in the poorest regions, if you don't have you, your household do not have a mobile phone, uh, maybe your neighbor had it. So the possibilities of, of, of building up from the territory, from the community, from the neighborhood, um, alternatives of um, survival is much more uh, hopeful from this type of a horizon than from the horizon of total exclusion and marginalization that has been the norm in the midst of, of this austerity uh, policies that have uh, precarized uh, wage work and at the same time has constricted in a very severe way the effective demand, uh, not only for the big companies, but in a cascade effect uh, 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 with, uh, with uh, um, a domino effect over the uh, uh, social and popular economy. And Pedro, for our last question, I don't want to finish this program without asking you about the, the issue of dollarization. As uh, most people know, Ecuador is under the dollar uh, system. We don't have an, a currency of our own. How does that affect uh, differently our country than the rest of them? Exactly, um, specifically because we are seeing a lot of reports of uh, people re retrieving a lot of money from, uh, from, the, from their uh, bank accounts here in Ecuador. How would that affect how we see our country in the next year or five years? Is the dollarization in any danger? Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is uh, precisely the, the part of the agenda. They had created the same elites that created the, the, that uh, profited out of the neoliberal policies during the previous uh, three decades, uh, had profited out of the deregulation and the, the programmed uh, implosion of the financial sector at the end of the 90s. The same elites that profited out of the neoliberal policies, the privatizations, the, the dollarization itself, now uh, are, are prone to create the conditions for the explosion of dollarization and to and to to obtain the more the the, the more uh, the, the the highest uh, the highest highest price that they could be able to do it uh, part of the of the pretensions of the Trolley for the the omnibus law uh, that they attempted to 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 approve the, in last October was precisely the deregulation that um, were uh, creating the conditions for uh, um, tax haven, the most extreme uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, financial paradise, uh, uh, even better for them and for the Colombian mafias for narco uh, laundry, um, even better than any of the. Of the of, of the Caribbean islands that had been burned burned up by the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers. Mm -hmm. uh, on the contrary, we we now we have to create the conditions for stability. Even if we decide uh, sovereignty with sovereignty and democratic procedures uh, mm -hmm. to get out of dollarization, there are other alternatives. But because of course dollarization created structural restrictions in terms of the ammunitions that uh, they, they, they have in order to respond to the crisis. Uh, but in the uh, political economy conditions right now, unfortunately, this is uh, marked by this agenda of, of, of predation of, mm -hmm. of, of, on behalf of these elites. Indeed. 
Thank you very much, Pedro, for your time and for also guiding us through this very interesting and very difficult to understand topic, which is the economy and how it relates to our social life. Thank you very much. Huh? Take care. Thank you. So we were talking to economist Pedro Paez on the impact of COVID-19 on citizens' economies and the state finances and how Ecuador could stay afloat during these difficult times. We have to stay positive, of course. Thank you for watching. This is Interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time.